sack of wine. You're an inanimate fucking object! Stuck up, half-witted, scruffy-looking nerfer! Is that your nose or did a bus park on your face? If I had a dick, this is what I'd tell you to suck. RoboCop 3. Welcome to episode 6 of Roasting Movies. There, It's been a slow movie season, so I figured, you know what, let's bring this back. And I recently just watched all the RoboCop movies all the way through for the first time. I had only seen the remake just this past week. I watched the first three, and I heard so many bad things about RoboCop 3. So I was like, this movie's either going to be special, or it's going to be really bad, and I can't talk about it. Luckily, RoboCop 3 special so let's get into roasting robocop 3 so first things first robocop 3 came out in 1993 these were released in three-year intervals and it doesn't even star peter weller as robocop that should be your first indication that this movie is going to be bad also it's rated pg-13 not r that should be another indication that it's going to be bad so the movie starts off with the opening scene featuring a five-year-old doing calculus this kid, I don't know if he's actually five years old, but man, he looks like he's five. Like, seriously, man, he's a child prodigy. We have a child prodigy in a RoboCop movie. I guarantee you, if he's doing math, it's going to come back around later. Pay attention to those math skills, because they definitely do. And you get some background that this neighborhood in Detroit called Cadillac Heights wants to be demolished by McDaggett and his force from Omni called the rehabs, they're the most stereotypical, like, military-looking guys. You know that they mean business when they're there, but, like, seriously, man, like, they couldn't come up with, like, a different design for these guys. The first thing that came to mind, and I get that it came out so many years after this movie, was the Peacekeepers from The Hunger Games. That's what they really look like to me. We just really warped from franchise to franchise, didn't we? We really just did. So, like I said, they're there to demolish Cadillac Heights and... There's riots that happen, and this little kid, this child prodigy, who's so good at calculus, gets separated from his parents. And guess what? Guess what's happening during these first 15 minutes? The cops show up, not RoboCop. RoboCop is nowhere to be found. Where the hell is RoboCop? We're about 10 minutes into the movie right now, and there is no sign of RoboCop anywhere. And as I said, RoboCop isn't even Peter Weller. If this was Peter Weller, at least... RoboCop would have some presence, I feel like. I feel like Peter Weller would be like, no, RoboCop's got to be here in this scene right now. But it's it's John Robert Burke or Robert John Burke. I don't know. I don't care to look up what the correct order of his name is because he's not RoboCop. It's like Joel Kinnaman's not RoboCop. I get Joel Kinnaman's in the remake, but it's like Peter Weller is who made RoboCop. So iconic. Not John Robert Burke. This guy has no charisma, and I'll talk about him later, but they try their best to just make him a Peter Weller clone, and it's very awful. This machine that looks like an ED-209 from the first one pops up, and of course, here's where this kid's math skills come into play. This kid, Nico his name, he uh, hacks it and disarms it. Penal code 114, section 3. I am authorized to use physical force. You now have 10 seconds to comply. You won't believe this. He'll be loyal as a puppy. How the fuck did that kid do that? And then he uses it, he hacks it to blow a door into the armory for this gang. Maybe this kid should be RoboCop. And then we use this thing to fight the cops. Gunning down all the cops. And like I said, this movie is PG-13. So what happened to the ultra-violence? Of the first two, the first two were bloody and brutal. Like, they didn't hold anything back in terms of the violence. It was just a complete onslaught. Murphy gets his arm shot off in the first movie and gets shot in the head and dies. And then gets reanimated as RoboCop. There are people getting gunned down left and right with blood spurt everywhere. There's even that first guy in the first RoboCop movie who just gets completely obliterated by the ED-209. Just repeatedly, just taking shots to the chest and there's blood flying everywhere. This is a bloodless affair. 
This is a RoboCop. This, does, this just feels like a generic sci-fi movie involving robots, not RoboCop. And there are so many instances so far in these first 15 minutes, where RoboCop isn't even in it, of awful dialogue. Like, what is up with this dialogue? We'll just wait until RoboCop shows up because that's when the dialogue gets even better with this movie. So after the riots, we cut to a robber at a diner. And this is the best part. And just look at how eccentric this guy is. What can I do for you, pal? Um, Everything in the register now! Literally the best part of the movie right now. That is the coolest yet dumbest robber I've ever seen. Like, Jesus, make yourself known to the world that you're gonna rob the diner. Just do it subtly. Had me in stitches. It's so stupid, though. Apparently, every cop in the city is at this diner. And they all just take out their guns. And this guy has like the quickest surrender I've ever seen. He's just like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> he just puts his arms up like that. It's literally one of the funniest things I've ever seen. His intro is hilarious. His surrender is hilarious. All the cops trying to arrest him is hilarious. And this is where we are introduced in the movie to the one mainstay in this entire trilogy. And probably the best part of this movie. Nancy Allen as Lewis, uh, Murphy's partner throughout the first three movies. They somehow convinced her to come back but they couldn't convince Peter Weller to come back. Peter Weller probably read the script and was like, nah, that sucks. I don't want to do it. Quite frankly, I don't blame him. Or Nancy Allen sucker to participate in this movie. Well, Peter Weller is just on his couch watching this movie at home saying how bad it is. He couldn't be bothered, so why should she be bothered? And then we get into this chase scene, and this chase scene doesn't really feel like a chase scene. I mean, it is a chase scene, but it comes across more as a joke rather than taking itself seriously like all the other action scenes in RoboCop do. Like, I'll say this. The stunt work and the effects are pretty good. Probably those two things and the fact that Nancy Allen came back as Lewis in this movie are the only things this movie has going for it. It's the fact that the cops are chasing these thieves with the little kid who loves math. <laughs> It's like, that's the joke. That's what makes this action scene funny instead of serious. They're chasing that gang with the little math prodigy. <laughs> and at this point, we are 20 minutes into the movie. Where is RoboCop? We've had two action set pieces so far, and RoboCop hasn't even shown up yet. They felt like the perfect opportunity for him to show up. And it's obvious that they're hiding him because the actors changed. How sad is that? Or the budget just isn't there. So these punks show up to the wreckage. You have this dude with like the Liberty Spikes and one pulls out a knife that looks like the glaive from Kroll and Robocop finally, finally shows up after 20 minutes of his absence. He's finally here, Robocop and all his Robocop glory. And his first instinct to save a cop is to drive his car off the top of a parking structure and then shoot a circle in the roof of his car and pop out of the roof. What the fuck is that? Why? That's not RoboCop. It's the funniest thing this movie has shown us so far, too. Better than the robber at the diner. Either that or his voice. Like, he starts talking in this scene. Why does his voice sound so warbled? I have no idea what's going on right now. Police officer. No loitering. Oh! These two punks then decide to douse Robocop and alcohol and light him on fire. At this point, with these punks, and especially the kid with the Liberty Spikes, I feel like I'm just watching circus performers perform pyrotechnic stunts. I don't feel like I'm watching a Robocop movie. It's just a gigantic circus show. It's like Batman and Robin. It's a giant circus. Nobody's here to take this shit seriously. They just want to be circus performers. <laughs> and RoboCop's lineup. Nice try, Grace. Had me dying. So fucking hilarious. We are then introduced to Rip Torn as the main villain who is credited as the CEO. But he's not really the main villain. <laughs> You'll see who the main villain is later. This movie has like three different main villains. 
It's insanity. And nothing really speaks villainy more than telling your own employees to stop clapping like he does to Johnson. You know that guy means business when he can get people to stop clapping. Then Bradley Whitford shows up as Jeffrey Fleck, and when he shows up, you know he means villainous business. So, how many villains does this movie have? I've counted three of them so far. McDaggett, the CEO, and Fleck. Next, we get a first look at John Robert Burke as Robocop, and they do absolutely nothing to distinguish him from Peter Weller. They do their best to make him look like Peter Weller, which is probably in their benefit, because if people were saying, oh, that looks so much different from Peter Weller, then people would probably be complaining, but people are already complaining that Peter Weller's not in the movie, and you're already trying to make John Robert Burke look like Peter Weller. <laughs> You see what I mean? It's crazy they're trying to convince you they're the same person, but they're not the same person. <laughs> I'm so hung up on this. I don't know why I'm doing this. What is it? So RoboCop enters a church of what is supposedly full of terrorists, and then McDaggett and his team of the rehabs are outside, and... He and the rehab shoot and dead. The one character that was actually kind of carrying this movie is shot dead in an actually pretty brutal scene for a PG-13 rated movie. She gets gunned down like people in the first two get gunned down. And there's blood spurts everywhere. I'm like, this is the RoboCop violence. I like good bloody shit. But turns out some of these terrorists are the thieves that blew into the robbery with the little math prodigy kid whose name is Nico, by the way. I don't think I mentioned that. And and there's way too much focus on these people and especially this little kid. What? <laughs> like, I get he's a math prodigy, but what does he know? What does he know? It's that entire Riddler meme from the Batman. You know when people post that meme, does he know? That's what this is. With this little kid, Nico. He's trying way too hard to convince RoboCop to help them. But RoboCop is convinced. He goes with the thieves into the sewer, and Nico reboots him. How does he know this shit? For some reason, around this point of the movie, the movie starts to take itself a little bit more seriously. It's no longer as fun as it probably should be. But we get back to that eventually, because it was around here where I was like, I really don't know if I can roast this anymore. But it's a shame it took the movie this long to start taking itself seriously. The first two took themselves as serious as serious can be. Those movies actually had something to say about greed, conglomerates, corporations, how bad they are, capitalism. This movie hasn't really had anything to say in that regard yet. It's really just been hey, here's this child prodigy and here's RoboCop as a different person. That's really it. it. It The whole movie has played off as a joke so far. Not like, not the serious tone that the first two movies have. Now we're kind of combining tones here and it doesn't work for a movie like this. I miss how dumb and stupid this movie was at one point. Like, it just lean into that. Like, now we get people like Fleck committing suicide at <laughs> Omni, like, and even before that, he, he mentions, like, four people have, like, committed suicide at Omni because, like, work just consumed them. Where are we right now? Go back to the tone that you established, like, the stupid, geeky tone. That's what this movie is supposed to be. Why are we all of a sudden turning this up a little bit? And this is also where the whole Kanemitsu subplot comes into focus. Also, is Nico a he or a she? They refer to him as he. They refer to him as she. Maybe he's non-binary. I don't know, man. Like, and then that's fine. Whatever it is. Like, it was. If if that's the case, then the movie was progressive before movies got progressive. It was ahead of its time. But I don't know, man. Like, they refer to Nico as both. I am as confused with that decision as to whether or not he's a male or female as I am with the decision to recast RoboCop. I want to say too that with this subplot involving this other corporation, Kanemitsu, that nothing makes your presence more felt than slashing the middle of a sign and having it collapse so that it creates little sparks for the kids at home who are now bored to death watching this movie and playing with their RoboCop action figures. So RoboCop goes into the police station in the next scene, and the next scene is actually somewhat good. In retaliation, he goes into where the rehabs are being held and blows out the rehab's hideout in retaliation for Lewis's death. It's a fine scene, but man, the dialogue. Holy shit, man. Why is RoboCop quippy? RoboCop was never quippy before. Supposed to be a serious character, not some dude who cracks jokes. He's throwing around insults at every second. Same thing happens at the part when he saves the lady from the advancements of the rehabs. Don't be crazy. 
cracking jokes, man. That's not you. And now we get another action set piece. We have a car chase here, and... Why is RoboCop driving that car? Why? This movie is turning into a joke again. I love that it's turning into a joke again, but why would RoboCop drive that car? Why? There's nothing that indicates he would drive that car. I mean, am I watching a RoboCop movie or a circus? He's clearly doing stuff he would never do, like shoot through the windshield, shoot a circle in the roof, and pop out of it like he did earlier. At this point, I would probably say I am watching the circus. I mean, look at the car he's driving in. Is that owned by Prince? Or is that something Elton John would drive through the Everglades? It's not something RoboCop would drive. And one of those resistance people that's like part of Nico's group, he sells out the resistance and uh mcdaggett and the rehabs come and some extras that play the rehabs in this scene are hilarious they come busting in and then they just keep doing this with their guns they're like waving their guns around like is this how this thing works is this a toy i also have to bring up the actor who plays mcdaggett what a stone cold expressionless emotionless actor one note man this dude is like a stone wall this is denise richards world is not enough level bad for acting what an actor with no aura or presence man he talks in the same monotone voice no matter what emotion his character is calling for in the script he just reads his lines all the same way. It makes McDaggett a less of a character and a less compelling villain, and it also calls into question who the real robot in this movie actually is. So now we're getting to the big finale. The finale of RoboCop 3. We're getting there. We're almost there. Thank God. The rehabs have captured the doctor that has been working with RoboCop this whole time. Along with Nico, the cops are warning everyone in Cadillac Heights that the rehabs are coming, and RoboCop, well, he's just kind of hanging out doing nothing you know he's hanging out with the kanamitsu guy and then he has to fight the kanamitsu guy turns out this guy is a samurai robot he fights like a samurai <laughs> this fight's hilarious man i love this fucking fight it's one of the craziest things i've ever seen and it's also one of the whole most hilarious things i've ever seen the, the way this robot dies is hilarious <laughs> This turned from a sci-fi movie into a samurai movie. We're not watching RoboCop anymore. We are watching Samurai Cop now. I tried to take the liberty of counting how many flips this guy does because it seems like this is a scene where this guy is just going to do a whole bunch of flips. But no, I instead counted how many times this guy swings that sword around. Enjoy. <laughs> Like I said, he's got the best death in the entire movie. My jaw dropped with excitement from how corny and funny that was. What makes it funnier is that the rest of his body is still in his fighting stance after his head gets blown off. He's still like this with the sword and there's no head. <laughs> Oh, RoboCop 3, you don't cease to amuse me. It looks like an action figure. You just rip the head off of I can get a hit in on this guy. He's made of plastic. It's a Oh, what? What? These are plastic. He can't fly. And then you know what happens next? Robocop flies, man. They are a terillium carbonic alloy, and I can fly. Look at that cool jetpack he's got. Are you fucking shitting me right now? It's hilarious, though. The fuck does he think he is? Iron Man? I swear to God, this movie. He's more concerned about the next stupid thing they it could possibly do than more concerned about being good or having something to say like the first two did. The tone is just not what it should be. And you know that samurai guy he just fought? Like I said, he's a robot, but it turns out there's a whole bunch of other robots like him. So jetpacks and samurai robots. That's what we sung to in the RoboCop series, ladies and gentlemen. I am now watching Samurai Cop.
Actually, write that down for a future movie, Rose. That's a good one. <laughs> one of these robots, when he gets like all slashed up and all that, has the stupidest fucking face I've ever seen. It reminded me of that Star Trek movie. I forget which one it is. Where, where they go to that planet with the people with the weird fucking faces that creep the shit out of you. That's this, but this is just funnier. <laughs> that face will haunt you in your dreams at night. Freddy Krueger won't, but that face will. Robocop gets his jetpack back, lights McDaggett on fire, saves Nico and the Doctor as the building blows up behind them, and hopefully the movie is over. Let's hope, because a common theme in these movie roasts is that the movie's not quite over, but it seems like it's over. Yippee! Samurai Robocop saves the day, and the movie is in fact over. Thank you, God. Good riddance at this point. So that is Robocop 3. Nothing like the first two. If there's any lessons or things that I learned from watching the Robocop trilogy for the first time, it's that Robocop 1 had the ED-209. Robocop 2 had Kane as a villain, and he was a vicious, psychotic cyborg. Robocop 3 has child prodigies that are good at math, jetpacks for Robocop to fly, and samurai robots, and also people that hate their jobs at Omnicorp. <laughs> this movie's awesome! So that's my roast of Robocop 3, guys. I hope you really enjoyed it. I, it's a dead movie season. I figured now was the perfect time to do this. Once I decided to watch Robocop, I was like, Robocop 3 is going to be special, ain't it? Stay tuned for more roasts coming very soon. You guys are the best. Thank you for watching. My name is Alex Madden. I will see you at the movies somewhere. Thank <laughs> you.